All right, we are on video four of the immune system uh, for 24-2 lecture. So I just started out on humoral immunity in the last slide, in the last video, I guess. So I got down to here at the bottom and I said, both are examples of active immunity, see the next slide. Well, here's the next slide. Uh, active immunity, as I'd already mentioned, is when your cells make their own antibodies. So they gotta be active. They they do stuff. You get exposed to the virus, or you get exposed to the bacterium, or you get exposed to the fungus, or the whatever toxin, and you build your own defense. Or you can get this from a vaccine. Vaccines give you a, like I say here, killed or weakened antigenic determinants. They, they disassemble the virus, let's say, and give you parts of it. That's inside of that vaccine. So it's kind of like you're not in danger from looking at the disassembled virus and building your antibodies to defend yourself against it. It would be like uh, if there is a, a, a serial killer on the loose and if they've got a photograph of them, I'd want to have a look at that photograph so that if I saw this person next time, I would recognize them. It's a lot safer than being exposed to the serial killer then getting to recognize them later, all right? So vaccines are basically like a, a, a safe way to expose you to the antigen. Uh, you develop a response to it, you just don't have the pathogenic uh, worries that you would with a live vaccine. Uh, Pass immunity is you just get antibodies. So you don't make your own antibodies, you don't build memory cells, uh, you don't build your own plasma cells, you, you're getting free antibody. So uh, fetuses get this from the placenta, newborns get it from their mother's milk. You can get it via injection. If you ever get bit by a snake, I always use snake bite examples, but if you get bitten by a really dangerous venomous snake, so you get bitten by a cobra, well, you're not going to want to go through that primary response. You don't want to say, I, I'll take it, you know, I'll just build my own antibodies because it's so toxic that it could kill you before you build up some immunity to it, before you build the antibodies to it. So what they'll give you then is something called anti-venin or anti-venin. You may see it called anti-venom, but that's actually wrong. But anti-venin is a, uh, are the antibodies that they got maybe a horse to manufacture uh, after giving the horse my, tiny shots of, uh, of snake venom. The horse will build up its immune system. You get the antibodies out of that horse's blood and then you get an injection with those, those antibodies. Same thing works if you step on a nail and you get a tetanus shot after you step on the nail or uh, you step on or you get bit by a, you know, possum or something, right? And you get rabies. Those are going to be shots they give you afterwards that treat the infection without yourself building up your own immune system to it. All right. That was a little tough to explain, but I think I got it across. Antibodies. There are five different classes of antibodies. Here they are. Uh, these are some little you know, the greatest hits of each of these, uh, learn these, all right? I'm not gonna read it off. Next page, here's kind of what antibodies look like. I've saved this, you don't have to worry about the heavy chains, light chains, all that stuff, how many amino acids they are, none of that. Uh, kind of what they look like three-dimensionally. Uh, this is, these are the different classes, right? IgM is a pentamer, five, five-sided uh, star kind of thing. Uh, IgA is a dimer too. All the rest are all monomers. Here is what antibody can do for you. There's the list. Here's what it is. Uh, let me quickly talk about it. Neutralizing, if you surround it, its active bits can't inter interfere with you, interact with you, right? If you put, like with Mr. Incredible, remember in uh, The Incredibles? He was in that secret cave or whatever, and he got busted, and he tried to run out, but they put those big blobs all over him. Well, he couldn't be Mr. Incredible if he's got blobs all over him. So if you can clutter up this, this virus's exterior, you're neutralizing it. Agglutination is when you clump them all together, right? So maybe you got a bad blood trans, uh, transplant, transfusion, yeah. Um, or this could be bacterial cells just as easily. So if you group them all in one spot, well, your phagocytes are going to only have to take one bite to get four. Precipitation is when you take things that are dissolved and you get them out of solution. So if I that snake bite, snake venom is, is uh, dissolved in a liquid um, solvent. But if you want to be able to grab it or fight it, you want to 
precipitate it. Complement activation is a big, big uh, uh, assortment of things, but basically you're act, you're turning complement on. Complement is that um, protein family that uh, that is a tool to fight infection. You can see that all of these things lead to stuff I was talking about, right? So helps phagocytosis, um, uh, stimulates the infl inflammatory response, or can even directly kill the cells that are uh, dangerous to you. This is the last slide of this particular screencast and uh, last slide of humoral immunity. It's the topic of what they call monoclonal antibodies. Now these are, this is a um, medical technique where you, you grow um, plasma cells in lab, in a laboratory setting from descendants of a signal cell. So a cell that has, that a B cell that produces an antibody to uh, snake venom. Okay, cool. If I can make millions of those, they're going to make lots and lots of antibody and I can take that antibody and treat somebody with it. Here's what it's used for. Uh, diagnosis of certain conditions, right? Pregnancy, uh, by, by taking a sample of that person's blood or tissues, exposing it to the antibody that you've built in lab. And if there's a response, you say, oh, that's what they have. They have pregnancy or they have cancer. You can treat certain cancers as well. Now, this is topical. So right now there are there are some trials underway that to see if they can grow antibodies in a lab, monoclonal antibodies in a lab that will basically neutralize COVID-19, right? So here's that SARS coronavirus 2 uh, or COVID-19, that's the current pandemic. If they can get these guys to do this, then they won't be able to attach to your cells and infect them. Now, this, like I, like I, like you should imagine, is not a long-term solution. This is something that you can give to somebody to give them short-term uh, protection against the virus, but not immunity, right? Uh, you can't; these guys don't circulate forever. You'd have to get repeated injections over and over again. But it could be useful if you've just gotten sneezed on or you just, you know, got exposed to coronavirus so they can get this thing geared up. Uh, maybe they could treat you quickly after that and give you like basically prevent you from ever being infected. infected. And that's it for this screencast.